Hello everyone, this is Tina from Tina's Workshop. And if you haven't been here before, um, I do all kinds of different things. Um, my basis is in fiber arts, especially crochet, though I've been doing a lot lately with um, spinning fiber and dyeing it. I also knit and I paint and I do photography, I decorate cakes, I, yeah, there's a lot of things I do. So you're, you'll find a little bit of everything here. Um, so today I'm going to start off with um, a couple of things I just wanted to show you because I couldn't help myself. So I have a Jeep Wagoneer um, and you know the usually the Jeep Wranglers they get ducked but my sister-in-law has a Jeep Wrangler so she's been ducking me lately and um, I got one for Halloween and then I got one today and I'm pretty sure it was her. She still won't admit it but I'm pretty sure it was her. So why would they have ducked mine and not hers? But anyway, it's still really cute. Um, and I actually had to paint it a little bit. How cute is that? That little duck. It, I can get it to focus. There we go. And it had gray hair, so I did brown hair on it. And then I added a little bit of color into the sock and the yarn because I thought it was kind of funny in the sense that I have been knitting a sock in kind of a green color with these little specks of brown. So I added that to it and something fell. I don't know what fell. Um, anyway, so just thought that was really cute. Had to share it with you because it's going to go out into my car and it won't be here when I do my little podcast piece. Um, and if you probably can't see it, but let's see, you got to see my shirt easily distracted by spinning wheels. Cause yep, that's me. I have nine of them now, so I do get very distracted by them <laughs> anyway. So today, um, there is a yarn that I have seen at Walmart and I've kind of looked for an excuse to use it. Um, and as I was sitting here talking about YouTube ideas with my son the other day, we started talking about it and thought it might be a good one for a YouTube video. So it's a really pretty yarn. Um, this is the yarn and it's soft. It's a big chunky yarn and the colors are just really pretty. Um, so it's a variegated yarn that would normally just give you a random variegation. However, supposedly, if you knit this right with the pattern, you will get that. It will come out, and I printed out the pattern, it is supposed to come out like that, so you kind of got, like you've done color changing in it. So. It's a free pattern. Um, they have, they actually have a couple different ones. If you get this other color, so the color I got is called Snapdragon. Um, and that one makes that, is supposed to make that cow. Um, and you need two skeins of it to do this. Now there's another color that is called, I think it's Hydrangea. Where is it at? Yeah. Hydrangea, if you get the one called Hydrangea, which Walmart doesn't carry, um, then you only need one skein and you can do that little beanie. And it would have been a much easier, quicker video, but they don't carry that one. They have four different colors they carry. Um, and then they, they do also have ones that aren't chunky. So you can actually go on to Premier's um, website and you can get the different ones and they have the different patterns there's there's a pattern that goes with each one to have your colors come out just like this um planned pooling if you've ever done planned pooling which i have and it's a little bit more complicated because you have to actually um figure out how many stitches you get you have to do a swatch and figure out how many stitches you'll get for each color and then there's a, a chart you put this into and you can figure it out so that you can actually make like a, an argyle um, plaid look um, if you do your stitching 
properly, but there's a whole process to that. So this is supposed to be plug and play. You know, you take this pattern and if you do it exactly right, I don't know if it's going to tell you to start single color marker to indicate. Curl from top down. Yeah, I don't know if we've got to start at a certain color or not. But anyway, yeah, you're supposed to be able to just take this yarn, do that pattern, and have it come out like that. Anything else, you're going to have just this random coloring. But So we're going to see if this really works. Um, this pattern happens to be a knit pattern. Sorry, my husband's phone rang. Um, okay, so it is a knitting pattern. We need U.S. size 11 needles. I have... A massive thing of needles. Um, these are all just circular and double points. <laughs> and I have, I actually have my favorite type of needles, but of course I don't have it in this size. So, eight millimeter, right? US 11, eight millimeter. Yep. And <laughs> I have one set that's it one set and they're not the prettiest of needles but hopefully it'll work let me double check the length that says i need a 24 inch length so let's see what i have here hopefully it works if i get going on and it doesn't work i guess i'll be making a trip to joanne's so Okay, we have needles, we have yarn, we have pattern, and we should have all the notions we need. So, and I'm not doing gauge because I'm one of those crazy people that does not like to do gauge. Um, I just go for it. So, um, if you're one of those people that always does gauge, you'll cringe at that, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not a gauge person. Um... Cast on 71, single color marker to indicate. Okay, that makes sense. It's just a stitch marker. And join for working in the round. Being careful not to switch stitches. Okay, it does not say to start at a certain color. Let's see if these, nope. I mean, theirs looks like, so that top is kind of rolled down. I'm going to say they started with blue. And let's see if we can pull the center out of this without having yarn barf. And that one is not going to be <laughs> yarn barf. That one's not blue in the center. I'm just trying to see if one is already at the blue and we'll just start there. But, oh, this one might have <laughs> definite yarn barf. Uh, come on. Where's the end? There it is. Oh, yes. Look at that. That one is right at the blue. So we will start with that one. And we'll see how this goes. I don't know how long this is going to take. And I'm hoping it doesn't take too long. Knitting, I know, always takes longer than crochet. But the good thing about this is where we're not actually having to change colors. We're just, you know, we've got... see round one and two basic knit and purl uh knit i mean everything's on one page it's literally the whole instructions they start right here and they end right there so it's like literally about that much space of instructions so it should be pretty basic. It is a chunkier yarn with a larger needle, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. And let's see, level is intermediate. I guess probably because you're increasing and decreasing and stuff. So let's see how this goes. And yeah, okay. I'm going to put you down to table view so you can see as I start, but as I work on this, I don't know, I might change and sit in another chair and watch TV or something, and I won't make you literally watch everything, and I will fast forward, so 
um, I will be back to talk to you after I'm completed it. Maybe I'll be wearing it. Don't think it's going to go with my red belt. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got to cast on 71 stitches here. So I always, always hate this part because I just never know. Half the time I get to the end and I don't have enough and I have to pull it out and restart or do a different type of add-on. Or I get to the end and I have this huge tail and I feel like I've wasted a ton. So I'm doing long tail cast on. If you are not familiar with knitting, that is what this is called is long tail cast on because I have a very long tail. There we go. <laughs> so now time to speed it up. Okay, 71 stitches. See, I still have that much tail. And let's see if this will join because we need to work in the round. See if we can make it go far enough. I think I can do it. <laughs> so, uh, and now we begin. Okay, so I am also uh, trying something. Um, okay, I'm trying something a little different too uh, for me. I am a thrower. I throw my yarn and it takes so much time. So I decided this would be a good project to practice um, doing continental knitting on because uh, it's a lot faster when you can do it that way. But I have had issues in the past trying to do it, and I always try and do it in the middle of a project, which is not the best time to do it. So I am going to um, try doing this all in continental um, knitting. So we'll see how I do as far as that goes. Uh, this is also your first round, so of course it's a little bit of a tighter but I have to remember <laughs> which way to put my yarn as I do this um, and see if I can get good at this, uh, it will go much faster. Um, but for example, the socks I have been knitting, um, I do my normal way and which are very very tiny lots and lots of stitches and if I could do this the other way it would be so much better but you can see it takes so much longer each time you're doing a stitch and you're having to throw that yarn as opposed to being able to do it all on the one hand so um, so yeah I'm I'm gonna try that on this side I, I don't know if it's a good time to try this or not since we're trying to make this come out right but We'll see. 
So I am I'm going to work along on this. Um, I will speed this up and cut some things out. And i got to remember to have that in that hand. Um, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. So see you back at the end. I feel like I am a newbie at knitting where I am trying this different style and it would normally be so much faster and <laughs> it feels very awkward because I'm not used to doing it this way. Hopefully by the time I'm done with this I will feel much more comfortable with what I am doing. I mean, it's not that much different. It's just that, you know, I'm, my hands are being held a different way and it's, it just does make it feel very awkward. And my needles are big enough that I did not have a stitch marker that fit it. So I'm using a keychain. <laughs> so. Ah. Why did I decide to do this right now? I should have just stuck with my normal way of doing things. I guess because I'm a glutton for punishment. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I will finish this um, some century. Um, luckily I don't have to purl that many rows. The rest of them are knit and I, the knit I was doing without too much trouble, so. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Okay, we'll see at the end of this if we've taught this old dog any new tricks. Mm, I need to stop talking now. Yeah. Okay, time to fast forward again.
So I'm getting the hang of this and it's, it's working pretty good. Um, I did realize I, I should have purled my first row and um, I ended up knitting it, but that's not really that big of a deal. But as I'm working along, I'm like, man, this just, this feels really big for the size needle it's supposed to be. And I went and I checked and I needed it on a size 11. And that's not a size 11. I mean, not at all. It is a size 13. So now the question is, do I just go ahead and keep working with it with a 13 and hope that the pattern comes out properly? Or do I go by the right size and start over? I mean, I am only six rows in, so I'm still towards the beginning. Um, and it should go a little faster if I do redo it because I'm getting the hang of the way I'm doing the stitches. But now I need to decide, do I keep going or do I start over? Okay, I decided that I needed the right size needles. Here's, there's the difference in the two needles. So there, there's a, even though it's one size, technically there's a decent size difference. So I went to the store, bought new needles, which means that I get to do some frogging. So it's time to rip it. Which Sometimes it's just heartbreaking, and other times it's so satisfying, too. So. Bye-bye to the wrong size. And... Here we go. It's time to do it. Let's see if I can make this a little easier on myself. There we go. There we go. It's all ripped out. And time to start over. Always fun. So, I will work for a while. And I will come back when I've made a little bit of progress because there's no reason for you to have to sit and watch the exact same thing over again. Okay, so I ended up getting new needles and they worked a lot better. They just seemed to lay out a lot better and I've gotten this far so far and everything seems to be lining up actually really nice and and i'm getting the hang of what i'm doing now watch now that i say that i'll try this and i'll mess up again let's see i'm getting it i'm getting it and it's so much quicker when i catch the stitch So I'm at the point where I'm actually having to do an increase.
So I'll show you that when I get to it here in a second. And I found a smaller ring to use. That's much better. Okay, so I am doing one pickup to go in one direction and the other one to go in the other direction. And I think there's a possibility I'm doing one of them a little bit wrong because I've got a gap. That was also supposed to be there. And the other one, I don't have a gap, so. So that is supposed to be creating the V that you see right here. But you can see I have a bigger gap on this side than I do on this side. So I think I've been doing something wrong here. Maybe I'm supposed to twist that stitch or something. But other than that, I think this is actually working really nicely. I'm very pleased that it's coming out like it says it's going to and that looks really cool so now i just have to keep carrying on with my increase and i think carry on with the increase and then do the edging so that the bottom is like the top is here and that's it but I'm really pleased with this. So I'll keep working and see you back closer to the end.
Okay, so I'm back to where I was after I pulled everything out and you can see that looks so much better. I'm glad I pulled it out. Don't have the big holes now. So now I just keep carrying on this way um, until I get to the end of the basically 32 rows. So there's 16 sets for the increase. You do an increase row and a blank row, um, just knit row. So once I get to the end of that, then there's the this little bit of stitching that goes there and that's it. So I will sit and work and see where I get to and I'll be back when I'm a little bit further along. Okay, so I stayed up late last night and I finished it. I didn't want to clip this on so you could see the whole thing. And I really like how it came out. I think it came out actually really super cute. Um, the, it, the pattern worked up like it showed that it would. So pattern next to me. And it's really cozy and comfy. The only thing um, that I will say the pattern was wrong on is it said to um, where is it at? Materials. It said you needed two balls. And I did not use two balls. I still have that much left of the first ball. So, yeah, didn't need to. Um, but otherwise, I mean, yeah, actually it was great that I only needed one. I mean, I could make another one, I could return it, I could do whatever, but I think it came out really cute. What do you guys think? Um, and in the way that it did, the pattern did come up, um, I really think even though they specifically say okay you know do the hat with this i think just about anything you work is going to come up relatively with this patterning uh, because of the way you've got a large set of this color large set of this color and then you have these little tiny sets of color which create this so i think i'm thinking for the most part it should come out like that um i mean i don't know until i try it so I might keep that and try doing a hat or something and see how it comes out and do something to match. So I don't know though. I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And, and I really, I actually really like this pattern, especially it's a little chilly this morning. So this feels really good on me right now. So I'm tempted to just pull out some of my other bulky yarn and um, make myself another one in a different color. These are not normally my colors. So, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe. And um, if you'd like to be notified when I upload, click the notification. I try to upload um, at least every Wednesday, usually around one or two o'clock my time. Um, what is that Pacific? Um, we'll see when this one gets out because this is Wednesday and it's 11 o'clock right now and I still have to get the video edited and um, uploaded and everything but I was kind of working trying to get this done and it didn't help that I've pulled parts out twice so but I'm glad I did because the overall look I think is nicer the fact that I had done that so anyway hope you guys all enjoyed this and we'll see you again soon bye